Hello, my amazing people. And welcome back to my channel if you're back. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I'm Shayna and I have an update on the Maya Miliete missing persons case for you today. Just my usual disclaimer, this is all information that I have found online that I've compiled into a video for educational and entertainment purposes. Now for those of you who are new to my channel, I did already make a video about Maya and about her backstory and everything that already happened prior to now. So if you want the most information or if you want to kind of understand what this video is about I do recommend going to check that out before you watch this one it was like maybe three four or five videos ago on my channel definitely something that you want to watch because this is going to be an update a follow-up video about that case but just to give you a brief synopsis my Miliete is a true La Vista mom who disappeared from her home in January and she left behind her husband Larry Miliete as well as three young children and basically there's been absolutely no trace of her there's been no activity on her credit cards her cell phone but there is a lot of speculation in this case when I say a lot I mean a ton of speculation as far as Larry being the main suspect in the court of public opinion but everything like i said is alleged everyone is innocent until proven guilty but there are some things that i wanted to bring to you today some huge updates in my opinion two primary ones that need to be talked about i did see a couple other people make videos about this but not as many people as i would expect considering the gravity and the publicity that this case has gotten up until this point but Without further ado, I will give you the information that I now have, and um, thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Now, we knew prior to now that there were eight gunshots heard the night that Maya went missing, but there was speculation as to what exactly the sounds were if they were just loud bangs or exactly what they were but some audio analysts have come forward to say like no those were definitely gunshots they cannot be mistaken for anything else however the type of firearm is unknown and also it's not 100 percent proven where exactly the sounds came from so speculated that it probably came from the house of Maya and Larry but we don't know 100% sure however listening to the audio recording it's kind of eerie because you can hear after the first gunshot kind of a squealing sound and I will play it for you guys so listen after the first gunshot you'll hear a squealing noise that a lot of people are speculating either came from Maya or one of her children but some people have said it may have been the sound of an animal being startled from the noise. We don't know for sure. My opinion is it sounds like a person, but again, I can't speak 100% certainly, but listen after the first gunshot. And what's also interesting about the gunshots is the first six are in pretty consistent succession. But then the last two are 30 seconds apart and 20 seconds apart. So what's eerie about that is that if these gunshots were the sounds that came from Larry shooting Maya in their home, he shot her six times. He stood there, either thought about what he was doing or reloaded and then shot her two more times. So it's just really um, a lot to take in and in a case like this where the police aren't releasing a lot of information, 
the public can kind of run with different narratives and assume different things but there's just too many coincidences what are the chances that there would be someone else shooting eight gunshots the night that Maya went missing and it not be Larry or someone related to Maya's disappearance let me say it like that in addition to all of this the same night Shortly after the gunshots were heard, about a half hour after the gunshots were heard, again, the gunshots were right before 10 o'clock on the night that Maya went missing. About 10.30, one of the neighbor's doorbell cameras or doorbell things was able to pick up that there was the sound of children playing in the middle of the night at 10.30. Now, how is this suspicious? How is this related to anything? It's believed that the children that were heard playing are most likely the three children of Larry and Maya and it's the middle of January now it is in California so it's not really cold but it was about 50 degrees so cold enough and the middle of the night now these children are all under 11 years old like I said I think they're like 11 7 and 4 or something around those ages so for them to be playing outside is just strange in most people's opinion which is a fair thing to be speculative about so the gunshots lining up with the time that Maya went missing, in addition to the sound of the children playing outside, people are thinking that possibly Larry may have shot Maya and then put the children outside to play so that he could figure out what to do after that point. And given the fact that the next day he apparently left two of his kids home unattended and only took one of the kids and was gone for 12 hours of the day and the two other children were home by themselves doing their homework doing their schoolwork their online classes with no parent around and the fact that one of the children told my sister that the last time they saw their mom was that night the night that these gunshots were heard not the next day which is the day that larry said that she went missing Again, this is a lot of information, so if you don't know the backstory, you're probably confused right now. So again, if you are lost, please go back and watch the other video or just orient yourself with the case before continuing because, like I said, this is a lot to take in. So, okay, but let's keep going. A second search warrant was conducted last week on the house of Larry and Maya and their three children, and there were crowds of people gathered around this house, as well as some of Maya's family members. And it was kind of sad because Maya's sister did an interview and said that the police didn't notify the family that they were doing this search. And while she kind of was trying to be understanding about why maybe the police aren't telling them everything and possibly trying to protect the investigation as much as they can, the family was a little bit disappointed that they had to hear from other, you know, sources that there was a search warrant happening but people weren't exactly sure if it was a search warrant at the time or if there was an arrest being made they just saw police going inside the house so they knew that something was up but there was a search warrant issued for the home and police were seen coming in and out of the house with boxes and bags and they're believed to be firearms so we know that there has been a temporary gun violence restraining order placed against Larry. Now what this means is that he is not allowed to own or operate any firearms while this restraining order is in place. Now we learned a lot in this restraining order. There's just bits and pieces that I've been able to piece together and there's three main points that I want to touch on. These three things separate from the audio and the gunshots and all of the inconsistencies in the story so far these three things are what really have me scratching my head as far as the most recent updates go so <sighs> strap in let's go in the restraining order it very clearly says that there was a photo that police got their hands on of <sighs> larry and maya's four-year-old child on their kitchen table surrounded by 16 firearms now, I don't know what circumstance would allow a child to be around firearms to begin with, let alone 16 firearms, but then to be photographed with the firearms, it's almost like you might think they were placing the child there purposely or Larry was placing the child there purposely to take this photo. We don't know when the photo was taken that has not been released, but we know that the photo was taken and that's enough. For me and also apparently for this restraining order to to include it in that so that's huge it's just a really red flag just really weird we know about the dangers of children and firearms in homes when they're not securely 
kept so but again innocent until proven guilty we don't know if the firearms are loaded if they had ammo so we don't know any of that information but still very much still a red flag for a four-year-old child to be photographed with 16 firearms some legal and some illegal second thing larry owns about 20 or so firearms as explained in the restraining order and some of them are handgun style firearms some of them are assault rifle style guns he has a collection and it is okay to be a gun owner and to there i don't have a problem with that but in the wake of all of the other stuff that's coming out that's when it becomes concerning but we know that he owns about 20 or so firearms some of which are registered a lot of which are not okay and the third thing that is a huge red flag in my humble opinion larry has admitted that he has multiple firearms and in not only not only does he have legal and illegal firearms that he has had in his possession he told police when they showed up with this when they showed up to do the search warrant that he got rid of a number of his guns and gave them to friends of his so that the police couldn't take them so he literally told them that he decided to remove the guns from his home because he knew the police were coming for them if you are under such a microscope that you are literally being investigated for the death or disappearance of your wife, why would you then go and get rid of the firearms that are being used in the investigation unless you are guilty? Unless one of the firearms that you got rid of or a couple of them were the weapons that you used to harm your wife. There would be no other reason for him to get rid of these firearms. They already know that he owns illegal firearms so why would he then go and get rid of them aside for getting rid of evidence now some lawyers have done interviews on different news outlets and said that larry can face criminal charges for this not even related to the disappearance of his wife but just for the simple fact that he is infringing upon an investigation and violating a restraining order essentially because even though the guns aren't in his possession he's not giving them up to police like the restraining order requires him to so he could face criminal charges just because of this completely separate from the disappearance of his wife so I don't know why he would want to even open this whole can of worms. Maybe he thinks he's covering himself by not giving police the firearms, but they already know that he owns them or has had them. So, but I digress. Moving on. Something that Lil O Me finds very interesting is that Mr. Larry has done not an interview, but he did respond to a news outlet about this whole gun violence restraining order and his weapons being seized. And he says he feels like his second and fourth amendment rights are being infringed upon and that it is his constitutional right to own firearms okay legal firearms it is within your rights to own them however why are you now making a statement now this man has been completely radio silent for three months he hasn't participated in one search for his wife he hasn't done one interview since from the very beginning he did like one or two when she very first went missing ever since then he has been radio silent hasn't done anything to raise awareness for his wife's disappearance on social media hasn't done interviews hasn't even sent a letter or a text or an email of anything any sort but now that his second and fourth amendment rights are being infringed upon he has a lot to say so i just think that is interesting too a red flag in my humble opinion um and mr larry had a lot of opportunity to come forward before this this isn't just little old me speculating maya's sister has said that she thinks and the family thinks that it's extremely weird that he has not participated in any of the searches that he's been so radio silent so this isn't just my speculation this is something that a lot of people have noticed and just the simple fact that he decided to come forward now when it's about him and not actually about Maya is just mind boggling to me. This man looks so extremely guilty and I am not the one to sit here and say that he is guilty. But a lot of things similar to the Alexis Sharkey case, a lot of things are making him look guilty. And I would argue that in this situation, Larry seems more involved in his wife's disappearance than Tom did seem in his wife's death. So I don't know what is going to be the outcome of this. I hope that there is an outcome soon. I think the police probably 
know a lot more than they are releasing like they i'm sure have already pulled his phone traces and figured out where he was the day she went missing i'm sure that they have collected dna ev evidence from the home he bleached the house we know that the when investigators came after maya went missing that all the windows in the house were open and fans were running there were holes that were patched up recently that he lied about and said had been there for a long time the, his children gave a completely different story about when maya went missing than what he did all of that combined with his bizarre behavior leading up to her disappearance his obsession with her leaving him him calling her job erratically time after time harassing her supervisor to have her move to a unit where there were no male co-workers like him making shrines of her and him he tried the christianity route where he basically said you will be condemned if you're not a woman of god the the terminology is slipping my mind but basically he tried the christianity route to get her to stay when that didn't work he then moved on to like the shrines in the in the in, in that kind of stuff so his mind was long gone before this and the nail in the coffin in my opinion is that Maya told her friends and family that if anything happened to her, it was Larry. So I lay all of that information out on the table for you. Do with it what you will. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below too. I would like this to kind of spark a dialogue because I do want to hear what other people think about this case. And again, let's always keep in mind that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. We are not the judge and the jury in this case, but I think that we do as people who care about Maya and her coming home have a right to be concerned about some things that we have seen so let me know what you think in the comments down below as stated in my last video i have a problem with nap taking i took a four hour nap today i got off work early i walked in my apartment and my bed was calling my name so i took a four hour nap so i'm probably going to be up tonight so oh i'm getting a call <laughs> hold on one second <laughs> You know what I'm going to say if you made it this far. You are loyal. You really are. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening, depending on what time it is when you see this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Sorry, buddy. I was recording a video. Oh, <laughs> Peep the setup. Okay. I just have a feeling in my bones that I'm gonna meet Drake soon. <laughs>